welcome to episode 3 in my Sound Design from the Sofa tutorial series. I'm Dan Marins cohen and I've been a sound designer for the last 6 years. Just as in our previous videos, I'm going to show you how to create the sound design for the footage that we just saw using the tools from Crotos Audio's Sound Design Bundle 2, a typical laptop, and whatever mic you have lying around, and any door that can handle video, in this case we're using Pro Tools. And as always, we're going to be doing it from right here on the sofa. Specifically in this video, we'll be primarily digging into Igniter, a plugin for building engines and vehicle effects. And we're also going to look at Reformer Pro, which uses your voice, or any audio input for that matter, to generate foley and sound design. There are two other plugins in the bundle, namely Dehumanizer, which is a modular voice modulator for creating monster, animal, robot noises and that kind of thing, and Weaponizer, which uses MIDI control to generate realistic gun, sword and any other impact-related repeating sound effects. To see how these both work in detail, make sure to check out the first two episodes in the series. I'll put a link in the description. Now, before we get into building anything, let's start by having another look at the clip and plan what we're going to need to create. Now, of course, the most prominent thing here is the vehicle, which is definitely a futuristic car, but it doesn't quite have the look of something fully electric. So we're going to need an engine sound that matches that by blending a sports car petrol engine with electrical wines that I'm going to generate using the synth module built into Igniter. We also have dials very clearly indicating acceleration, braking and gear changes, so we're going to need to write some MIDI automation data really carefully to time with that. Beyond the engine, we have tyre and road noise, which we can include in our engine model directly inside Igniter, instead of having to manually place them in the timeline. We also have a lot of objects that we're passing by, as well as moving cars, so we're going to want a mix of various wishes for that, and for that I'm going to use another instance of Igniter on one side, and Reformer on the other, to show you two potential solutions to the same problem. As well as the close-up objects, there's also a lot of buildings, so the last thing I'm going to add in is some delay and reverb to capture those reflections, then add some panning and volume automation so that they fire when the car passes. Then with everything combined we'll just do one final mix pass to make sure we're happy and everything's sounding neat, tidy and balanced. OK, so now we know what we're going to be building, let's open up our Pro Tools session and see what we're working with. OK, so if we take a look at the session, we can see I've got our stock footage here right at the top. Underneath that, we have a single channel for the entire engine and car noise, as we discussed earlier, as we'll be building the entire thing within Igniter. Moving on from there, we've got our left and right passbys, which, as we said before, will be using Reformer for the moving vehicles on the left, and Igniter for the static parked vehicles and bollards on the right. And finally, I've set up three auxiliaries, one for our main reverb, and then one each for our left and right reflections. So we're going to have the reverb here, and delays here and here. So anyway, with that covered, let's go and dig into Igniter and have a look at what's going on. As you can see, Igniter is divided up into three main sections. We've got our file management here on the left, where we'll be handling all our samples. We've got the main work area in the middle, which will handle the individual tabs that we can see here. And then finally, on the right, we've got our mix and output section. So we've got different modulators across the top, our overall engine rev control, our individual outputs, our master output, and then underneath that, an individual FX chain for each section. So now you can start to see why we're able to do everything within this one plugin rather than having to break out each section. So let's go back to our sample finder and have a look through this section here. So when you get Igniter, it actually comes with 24 ready to go engines right out the box, all of which can be accessed from the preset menus here. But you can also see the individual samples for the different um, engine and exhaust perspectives in this list here. So even if we just start with engines, uh, we can see we've got Aston Martins, Audis, there's some planes there, uh, a more domestic Dacia, uh, a high-end Ferraris, a for, uh, Ford F-150. There's huge amounts to choose from. And as we said, as you can see, a Tiger Moth, it's not just limited to cars. It's also got helicopters, planes, loads of stuff to play with. But in this case, the car we're looking at, I think, is extremely futuristic. But as we said earlier, it's not, not definitely electric. So I think it really quite closely resembles the Audi R8. And thankfully, we actually do have an Audi R8 engine. So we could indeed drag and drop it into these areas here and then mix between the engine and exhaust perspectives at will. But to save us a little bit of time, I've gone ahead and created an engine preset. 
we'll just turn it off for the moment so we can uh, hear me and I can talk you through what's going on. So now we've got those perspectives in, and you can see I've given it a slight hint towards the exhaust over the engine perspective, simply because the camera's out the back, and so we're going to hear more of the exhaust perspective than we would the engine. But I think there's enough character in that main engine perspective that I kind of, I want to keep more of it than would necessarily be there in reality, just because, I, like I said, I think it adds more colour. So underneath here, we've got control for RPM and load, and you'll see that is slightly different to where you may have noticed on the right here, we've got a rev counter. And that is so that we can separate our speed from our engine revs and therefore create gears. So depending on your use case, we've either got the ability to control them manually, which we'll cover in a bit on the right here, or we can use the automatic feature so that all the gear changes are handled for us. Normally I'd say this is quite a good route to go through to save time, but all our gear changes are actually illustrated in the video, so we can't really use this feature here, but it will give you a good idea of what the engine actually sounds like. So with that in mind, let's have a little listen. And we're gonna start by accelerating. And you can hear those gear changes that I'm not in control of at all. So it gives you a good idea of what it can do straight out of the box. And of course we can brake. And it goes to a nice little idle there. So that gives you a quick overview of what that motor sounds like. We have all sorts of other controls down here that will let us really fine tune it and make it nice and smooth the way we want it. But the next thing I'd really like to show you is the manual mode. That's because it's going to allow us to actually control when the gear changes happen, so we can line them up with our video footage. So whereas before we had this slider going backwards and forwards here, we're going to start the engine now and control the revs that you'll see moving from left to right. So you heard that, that took us all the way up and down through several gears. And the way we did it is because in this automation, our revs always move from left to right. But the y-axis can be any feature that you see with a title. For example, if I wanted the load to be controlled by the rev counter on this particular graph, I could grab the load, pull it in, drop it down, and now that's being automated along this graph here with respect to the revs. So the granular load in the y, the revs in the x. And we can see there that they both followed side by side, but that's not really going to work for what we're doing, so we'll take that one off. But you, it gives you an idea of how it works. And you can see these bars here, and what they represent is the 0 to 100% of whichever feature you're using. So let's say we didn't want the RPM to go all the way from the bottom to the top. Maybe it doesn't sound right when it's being pushed, or maybe our entire clip just happens in a, a very small rev range, so we want to just limit the range to give us maximum expression. So what we could do is drag the beginning and end to pick a more mid-range area, and now... You can hear that the revs only appear in that section there, even though our rev counter was going all the way from 0 to 100. But that's not what we want for this one, so let's just put it back the way it was. So, you've heard we've now got a pretty decent sounding engine already, and all we've done is drag in a couple of clips. But it's more than just a car engine, as we said before, and we want it to sound more electric. So that's where this synth tab comes in. So what we've got in the synth tab is a relatively straightforward five-channel additive synth. Now, these five channels all run independently of each other, and they all allow us to blend two types of waveform together, whether that be sine or triangle or even a noise. And we've got LFOs for frequency, vibrato, and amplitude. So you can imagine with five layers of this, we can actually come up with something quite drastic very, very quickly. But to show you what it sounds like at its core, I'm going to turn off all the ones I'm currently using in the preset and just activate this one on the bottom and turn on our engine. So as you can hear at the moment, it's just a basic sine wave. But now we're going to blend that with a triangle. We can then add an FM modulator. Mm -hmm. 
And now you know why it's called an FM modulator if you've uh, ever listened to a radio. So we're going to have a wind somewhere around there. So that's a starting point, but it's quite a bit of a howl uh, because it's static and doesn't go anywhere. What we need it to do is actually be controlled by the engine. And the way that we can do that is by automating one of these options here. I'm going to use the FM amount because I think that does some really cool stuff. And I think it's going to sound great when we add that in in a minute. So let's drop that in. And that's automatically applied that modulation to our gear shift that we drew out earlier. So let's give that a listen on its own. That might be a bit extreme, so I think I'm going to bring in its range just a little. That's sounding a lot more certainly interesting. So before we carry on with that, I'm just going to stop the engine for a moment and show you what I was working on with our preset before, where we've got a lot more going on now. You can see I've added some noise and lower frequency bass, so it should all have a bit more rumble. Um, I'm going to bring in what we just did, though, and see how that sounds. In hindsight, I think it kind of sounds ridiculous. So let's turn that off and stick with what we were working with before. Oh, I also forgot to mention, we'll cover this properly in a minute, that I've also added a ring modulator just to give it that final sense of a moving electrical engine. So let's hear what the engine sounds like in just the synth component. Incidentally, you could hear all that kind of wobbling and fluttering going on. A lot of that was coming from these LFOs here, which are having their rates controlled by the rev counter. So now let's bring in our engine sound again and hear how those two sound together. I think the synth is sounding just a little bit quiet, so I'm going to bring that up a bit and see how that comes across. OK, so that's starting to come together now, but there are still a few things missing. And the first of those is some noise when we shift gears. I know we're technically not in the car, but it's one of those sounds we just associate with driving. And it's also something I just really want to show you. So if we click on the tab, you can probably get an idea very quickly of how this works. We have these four individual one-shot lanes that can play any WAV file you choose at any speed or volume that you wish to use. And if you need your pitch or gain to be dynamic, there's even an envelope mode that we can use, should that become necessary. But in this instance, we're fine with the knob. Now, these four channels obviously relate to these four lanes up here. Now, also, as you'd expect, these four lanes follow the rev dial. So as I turn that up, you can see it's going forwards and backwards. And as you can also imagine, these play buttons here say whether the sound should play when going forward, only play when going backward, play in either direction or stop if it's currently playing. So you can imagine that for a lot of sounds that can be very, very flexible. In our case, it's playing these four different gear stick changes. So let's hear what these all sound like. And we'll do that by just quickly soloing the one shot section and starting the engine up. We can hear gear stick change one, two, three, and four. I think number three actually is a bit long. So we're going to shorten that. We just need to click and drag from the end that we want to move and move it into place.
And as you can see, I've also just added this envelope just because I felt it was clipping a little now that I've uh, tightened up the selection. So let's give it one more listen. Much better. And now as we play through, it will play those different ones. So if we've now got the engine started and we start going through the revs, there's the first one on our way up. And our second one on the way up. And as we come back down, our other changes. So hopefully there's enough variation in there that it shouldn't sound too repetitive while still minimizing the total number of assets we need to use. All of those come straight out of the box with Igniter. So now we've got our gear changes in, let's have a listen to it alongside the other components we've worked on so far. Decent, but I just think I think everything needs to come down a little bit for one thing. But I also think it just needs a little bit of EQ to bring out the mids. Much better. There we go. So I'm pleased with that. I think we've now got something most of the way there. The final thing I'm going to add is in this loop section where you can see we've I've added drone loops, which seems odd for a vehicle. But again, I wanted to add that to that futuristic, uh, not quite car engine sound. So if again, I turn it on and this time I unmute our loop section, solo it. As you can see, there are four loops, each of which are positioned in the timeline here. Now, I've got very, very big crossfades going on, and depending on what you're working on, you may want to reduce those, because really this is just to sit in the background and just create an interesting extra texture. So it doesn't need to be completely realistic, it just needs to fit in this particular instance. So to control the pitch, I did use automation, and this gives us a good opportunity to talk about the modulators across the top. So we've already looked at the first one. But you actually have a total of up to eight that can all be used differently and you can apply any modulation that you see to any modulation in here. It's always controlled by the revs, but it means that while this one's dedicated to making the gear shifts happen, for things like the road and tyre noise, we might want something more linear, where the, of course the speed of the tyres just increases and decreases with the speed, not with the current gear. And in this case, that's exactly what I've done here with the loops loop position. So this position is being controlled linearly by the revs here. It also means in theory we can control it differently, but that's actually fine for our purposes in this case. Now it is quite quiet and it is meant to be pretty subtle. So let's hear that and we can now hear our complete engine in one go. We might want to bring it up just a little, but I have a feeling probably not. sounding pretty decent i think certainly good enough to get some automation in there and see how it comes out so we'll open up our plugin automation selection window and you can see i've got the master rpm that's the main one that you want here um, and is equivalent to the rev counter here and also the granular load which refers to our load meter here and that's going to be really useful just so that we can control our deceleration which we can't really identify here because obviously it doesn't know our intention uh, so we have to tell it when we're going backwards with regards to the engine speed. And for that, we can then adjust it so that the load comes off when we're going backwards and only comes on again when, we go when we're accelerating again. Well, not going backwards, but you know what I mean. So let's close this down and start having a look at some automation. 
So here's what I've laid out. So let's watch the video back quickly and follow the automation. Now, you might have noticed that there were a lot of gear changes, but this was all linear. And that comes down to exactly what we were looking at before. The linear movement comes from moving the revs up and down. But as you're moving them, it knows, because we've set it out in the graph, when to drop. And of course, because this is 1 to 100, and automation in this case is going from 0 to 1, it becomes very easy just to move our rev counter back and find the position of the gear change, which in this case is 18 or thereabouts, which of course would be 0.18 in our automation. So we know if we want to change gears, all we need to do is make sure that the point where the gear change is, is where the automation is at the right value. We can see the automation here is 0 0.38. And if we come back to here, we'll find that that indeed is at 38 and is crossing over our gear change. And if we now to go back to the video, we'll see that gear change take place at that point. So that's how I laid out the automation for the car and controlled the gears. As we discussed earlier, you can see the load here is kind of following what's going on with the acceleration but instead gave it more extreme ups and downs because the load really comes from your foot mashing on the pedal as opposed to how fast or slow you're actually going. Accelerating hard from a low speed is a lot more load than gently accelerating at a high speed, for example, which is why it's a more overall more dramatic looking layout than our master RPM. Finally on the engine, one thing we haven't really looked at in huge amount of detail is this section down here, which is our mixer and effects chain. So you've probably got a good idea just by watching that these behave in relation to these tabs, as you'd expect in any door. What's interesting, though, is that they all have these five FX slots. In them, we've got a really good range of things that we can work with. Uh, we'll actually be covering this one, the Doppler, a little bit later. But for now, we've seen the ring mod, there's EQ, and saturation will also be coming back to later. And if we have a quick look at the way they work, as you click on this little circle here, that's going to bring up your details panel. So we've already seen the UQ. You can add as many or as few nodules as you like and move them around at will and, of course, automate them. All of those, by the way, can be found in this long list here. It's easy to figure out once you have a quick read, um, like loop for stop button. That's actually quite easy to follow. And literally everything has automation. You are not going to be short of things to automate in Igniter. Anyway, so we can also have a quick look here at our ring mod settings. So again, we've got different basic controls for that and indeed compression and a limiter, both of which are extremely useful. Right, let's bring the video back up and have a quick look and listen to what we've got so far. Okay, so it's coming along, but there's a couple of things missing still in that engine, and one of those is the road and tyre noise. So let's pull up Igniter again, and we're going to go back to our one-shots and take a look in our library for breaking sounds. Let's see what we've got. So obviously not that. There we go, there's some tyre skids that we'll find good for our project. Okay, so what I think I'm going to do is replace some of these gear changes with these tyre skids and just have it so that the gear changes also happen, but we just keep to these two variants. So I'm simply going to change these from up only to playing in both directions.
and the tyres I'm going to keep to only going in reverse. I also don't think we need it on every single gear. I also think we should have it playing forwards on the first gear just for when we lift off, but maybe not every single gear because that might become overkill. So let's start with that and put the right samples in. Let's have another listen to what we've got. There are quite a few. That's a pretty good one for leaving the line, so we'll drop that in. And I think that's the other one that I'm going to use. So let's have another listen and see how that comes out. Yeah, now when we're really at the high end, we've got a bit of braking coming in, and when we're really at the low end and just pushing off, although we probably won't hear it, we've now also got that too. So as you can see, it's not too dissimilar to our one shots in that we've got four bays that we can drop samples into here, which will all automatically loop and we can choose the start and stop positions as we did before, the speed and the volume. Where it's different from the one shots is rather than have four individual channels across here, we now have a blend system that works from left to right, which we can select with these buttons here. So we can now see the region for loop one, loop two, loop three and loop four. What we're looking at here is volume and crossfade information, but with this little toggle here, we can now switch it over to pitch, which means that we can really easily create smooth rises and falls as needed, as we'll see shortly. So let's get a sample in there, and I'm going to go back to our library and type in road. And I know because I've been through all of these before that uh, there's a good segment for road noise in the Tesla pavement dry road sample here. So let's drag that in. And what I'm going to do is place it across all four bays. But to add even more realism, I'm going to use these pitch controls here to nicely fade between them. So if I go back to region one and have a listen to the sample quickly. So as you can hear it playing, there's clearly segments that were, are going to be more appropriate for the beginning, middle and end. So uh, let's put those together now. Here's our first region. And I'm going to try and miss out the tails just because they're loops, obviously, um, when we don't really want to hear the fade at either end. We want it to be as close to continuous as possible. So let's say somewhere around here for that. And then portion three, we've got this segment here. And finally, segment four here. Okay, so if we now go through the rev ranges and listen to what we've got so far. Well, that's definitely road noise, but it's not particularly exciting at the minute. And that's why we're going to put the pitch automation in to make it follow the revs. So let's switch over to our pitch toggle. I think I'm going to start with it a bit lower down. Yeah, that sounds better. Now what we want to do is make sure that the crossover with the pitch is as smooth as it is with the volume. Just going to add a curve there so it doesn't go too wild. I mean, as you can see, you can just eyeball this. You don't need to have it uh, entirely precise. It will still fade neatly as long as it's close enough. Right, let's put it to the beginning and have another listen.
there. And now we've got a nice pitch rise in the sections that we want to use. We've got a continuous loop with no gaps. The only last thing I want to change is I noticed that, as you can see, these crossfades can all be moved and it allows us to use logarithmic curves to give nice, smooth volume shifts. Okay, so it's coming together, but it still doesn't sound too much. But it still doesn't sound... But it still doesn't sound as good as it could. So I'm going to add a couple of effects. I think it needs quite a bit more in the mid-range to get that kind of more lifelike hollow sound that you tend to hear from the roads. Yeah, yeah, I think that's working. Okay, and to find out if it is, let's bring it back into our full mix. Excellent. Yeah, I think that's really adding to the overall atmosphere and believability of the engine sound. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. I think one last thing I want to add to it, though, is just a bit of saturation. Just to bring those levels up a bit and just make it sound a bit brighter in the mix. So yeah, I just added that low cut there, just to cut out the bottom end, simply because the engine's already got plenty of it to begin with, and I don't want things to get too crowded in the mix. So let's have another listen. Go back to my EQ. Top end. Yeah, that has more of a road noise sound to it now rather than a dirty growl. Okay, so I think that's a good place to leave things for this video. Come back for part two, where we'll get away from the car itself and build our passbys in Igniter and Reformer, add our reverb and reflections, and finish it off with a final mix pass. Click the link in the description to head there now, but before you do, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification to make sure you don't miss out on any future episodes in the series. Thanks for keeping with us so far, and I can't wait to see you in part two.